Hey, good morning. How's everyone doing? Um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time out to come and view my presentation, and also the, the people at home or who are tuning in live as well. So uh, this is actually my only second in-person presentation. Uh, my first one was right before the last Roots Tech, and uh, of course, the world's been shut down since then, so all of my presentations have been virtual, so it's great to be back in person, and I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, this presentation today, well, first, my name is Sherman McRae. Um, I work for Family Tree DNA in a groups department, and I've been there for about, roughly about five years now, and uh, I mostly, I help I assist uh, group project administrators with their research projects and also make contributions uh, to our various research and development projects. And so today, this presentation is on our new Discover tool. It's like a Y-DNA tool um, that recently came out a few months ago, but it's still in beta, and, we, and we're continuously adding new features on to the project. And uh, let's get started. So I titled this Let's Play Connect the Forefathers. And so this project was born really out of the sheer necessity for us to provide our customers with uh, SNP A, big watt SNP age estimates. And so over the course of time, while we're calibrating SNP age estimates, we began to incorporate a large amount of academic and archeological samples. And so we needed to find a, a neat way to present all this information. So hence, we came up with the Discover project. Um, it's a unique set of tools that allow um, customers to see how they connect with archeological samples, famous individuals, et cetera. And you could also view how you match with other modern day testers. And so our new Discover reports make it easier for you to explore your paternal line through your surname. And you can use the Discover project to trace your paternal ancestry and discover captivating connections of families, renowned individuals, and archeological finds all over the world. And Family Tree DNA has the largest SNP database in the world. So our database is enhanced with thousands of unique samples from academic studies and ancient and archeological excavations. But first, I will just give a, a brief background on a Big Y700. The Big Y700, as many of you know, is like the Cadillac of um, Y-DNA test. Um, it sequences um, large amounts of mutations throughout the genome, and so you test positive for some and you test negative for some. And so we're able to look at the, those SNP mutations and provide a time, to mo uh, time estimate for which you may match other people who've done a similar test. And so the Big Y test is known for its ability to provide um, high quality and accurate results that can reveal important insights about a person's family history. This is a, um, just a screenshot of the growth of our haplo tree throughout the years. And R1B is at the bottom, and so you can see that's the most heavily defined haplo group. Um, they do a lot of testing. And next you have like the J and I haplo groups, but through, um, we've had, um, over the course of the last few years, we had a huge um, burst of big Y testers. I think we're up to maybe 80,000 big Y testers. And so, Back in the olden days, you know, people would take a big Y test and they would have to use what's called SNP map. And so part of the project is that we wanted to provide SNP age estimates to make it easier for people to see how they're related to uh, other Y DNA testers. I'm sorry, let's go back. And so we had a test called a big Y 500, so, but then we uh, created a big Y 700. So let's say you have a branch where, let's go to the next slide. So, Let's say you have a branch. Um, right now, we're looking at my maternal's grandfather Big Y test, and this is the block tree layout. And you see within that branch where it says your branch, there it says five private variants. So you would have to do the uh, SNP map to actually figure out how you're related to that common ancestor. But since we came up with the SNP age estimates, we took that legwork out and we do it for you. And so um, this is the estimate for time, the most common ancestor for the people that are in my branch. Um, one of the guys there has only, only has a big Y500, so we have to incorporate that date. But that's the time, the most recent common ancestor. So we really just took the hard work out of um, determining where your common ancestor is with uh, doing big Y tests. And this is another example. So let's say you wanted to know how you are related to people much further back. So you always look at the branch that's above you, and um, 
And that branch above you encompasses everyone to the, um, to the left. So let's say I wanted to look at how I'm related to the gentleman to the left of me. Um, then I want to look at the SNP that encompasses everyone. And that provides us with a time, the most recent common ancestor for everyone underneath that block. And that's the haplogroup group report for that. And it shows that uh, represents a man who was estimated to have been born around 1,250 years ago. And so our genealogy team has also researched many notable connections, including presidents, astronauts, pilgrims, actors, et cetera. And so since we're at a genealogy conference, I thought it would be great to include a genealogist. Um, the man in the picture is a, a notable uh, genealogist, one of the earliest genealogists. His name is Bob McLaren. He was a fixture at genealogy conferences. He was known for wearing his kilt and a pretty knowledgeable man. He also did a lot of work with the Clan McLaren Society as well. And so next we'll look at uh, the time tree. So another tool that we invented was the time tree. Uh, initially, customers only had the block tree to see how they were related. And so with this new Discover tool, we actually added on a new feature called a time tree. So it actually allows you to see how you connect with more than 80,000 big watt testers and over 5,000 ancient DNA samples from all over the world. And so, of course, in doing genealogy, of course, we always have our family trees. But this is built off strictly off genetic trees, um, just solely based off of DNA test results. So these trees are constructed entirely without any historical records or genealogies. This is the time tree from a SNP-based view. A lot of customers thought the numbers on the left were actually uh, years when in actuality they represented SNPs. And so that can make it really complicated for a lot of people who are not in depth into um, what SNPs to uh, figure out how they're related to the other people on the branch. So we just wanted to make it a little bit easier. So here on this screenshot, you can look at the top branch at IY20218, and you can just follow that down into descending order. So now customers or people on that branch can see that they descended from um, the lead ancestor, and you can look at the time the most recent common ancestor, and you're able to follow that down. So the time tree provides an awesome layout to show how you're related to other big Y testers. So we also included notable connections in the time tree. Uh, we have updates, so I actually, we had some updates yesterday, so I included some of them in our slideshow. Uh, so the first we'll look at the Bagratoni dynasty which is one of the oldest Christian ruling dynasties in the world. Uh, the Bagratoni genealogy traces back to the eighth century, and they claim to be descendants from the biblical king and prophet David. Um, so they're actually a Q haplogroup. And Q haplogroup is largely considered Native American, but of course it's Asian in nature. Next we'll look at um, Galgetti man. Um, he's from Denmark, and his bones were discovered. But what was interesting is that Oxford 8 uh, was also discovered. Um, he was killed in a St. Bryce's Day massacre um, in England, um, where the king ordered the mass killing of all Danes. So what was interesting about this is that genetic data showed that these two men were actually related. Um, genetic data showed that they could have been uncle, half-brothers, uncle, nephew, etc. cetera. Um, and so that was pretty awesome. So this is how the Galgetti man looks on a time tree. And you are able to look at other modern day testers. And they're actually able to see how they're related to him as well. So this is an image of the Galgetti man that was made by uh, archaeologist and sculptor Oscar Nielsen. So he, re he um, did some restructuring on, uh, for the Galgetti man, as you see there. And um, so Oxford eight bones were, so uh, Galgetti, this is in the Copenhagen Museum, but they also transported Oxford eight bones to the museum as well, so to the Copenhagen Museum. So now these gentlemen are reunited after more than a thousand years. Next we'll look at a famed geneticist, George McDonald Church. Uh, he's a famed geneticist known for the um, personal genome project, and he's um, been listed as one of the most eight famous geneticists in all time history. 
And you can see his haplogroup branch there, R FTC28160. And this is how George looks on a time tree in comparison to other testers. I added um, Van Gogh yesterday, so he was actually uploaded to our site as a notable connection yesterday, so I thought it would be pretty interesting to include him in the slideshow. Um, so I actually encourage people to, uh, um, to read this article where it says Sugar Babe. So um, in 2014, one of Van Gogh's descendants um, participated in a science art project which used genetic engineering to reconstruct Vincent Van Gogh's ear using DNA from an original letter from Vincent and cartilage samples from one of his descendants. It's pretty amazing what you can do with science. And this is Van Gogh on the time tree. You can see him matched against other archaeological or academic samples that we discovered from burial sites from all over the world. And this is um, Mr. William Tully Brown. He has a Native American haplogroup. So he was a decorated war veteran and a Navajo code talker. And um, he actually took this photo, came to our office in Houston and took this photo just days before he passed away. Um, so that was one of his goals. He always wanted to crack the DNA code. And uh, it's too bad he wasn't around to see his results get posted. But I thought it would be pretty nice to include him in this project. And this is where Mr. Tully Brown looks on a time tree, as you can see below. So those are all Native American samples that we've uploaded from genetic studies and placed them on our tree of mankind. And uh, also, this is another interesting family, the Coriel family. So I also have to give thanks to an administrator, uh, Mr. Lee Coriel, for making this happen. Um, and so they also have an interesting story as well, and there's an awesome blog or article out on his uh, lineage as well that's on the website. So I included this um, for the Coriel family. And they're EM35, which is um, an African branch, but there were some offshoots of those African branches that went into different countries. And this is a um, snapshot of the Coriel family. So all those other flags that you're looking at, they all share that common ancestor. EBY145801. And next we'll look at some ancient DNA samples that we placed on a time tree of mankind. So the first one I'll talk about is San Jose de los Naturales. He was um, part of the first wave of Africans to come into the United, well, part of the first wave of Africans to come into uh, the Americas. He was actually in Mexico. Um, I think they were in a mass burial that was discovered, and uh, so they discovered the bones or the burial. They did genetic analysis on the bones, and uh, so they published it in a genetic study. We take that genetic study and analyze those results and place them on our tree of mankind. So there's also some other, um, on this tree right here, there's also some other um, samples that we uploaded from African American burial sites as well. And so Cactican Furnace, if you see that, that was a, a site in Maryland uh, for another mass burial for formerly enslaved people that was discovered. Genetic analysis was done, and we published that data to the tree of mankind. So what's interesting, if you take a look at Zimbu there, he's my closest match. And so Zimbu, Babatunde, Pele, Ngongo, Wuta, Daba, Lima, Pita, they were all discovered at a a grave site in Charleston, South Carolina. So in 2013, um, during renovations in the Galliard Center in Charleston, um, the bones or, of 36 uh, bodies were discovered. This is the oldest enslaved burial ground in the United States. And so genetic analysis. So the Gullah community teamed up with academia to do genetic analysis. And um, he came back as a match to me. So Zimbu was a man. Uh, about 35 to 50 years of age, isotope analysis showed that he was an African, uh, probably from the Congo region of Africa, and he lived in the United States about five years before he died. But this is how San, Lo, San Jose de los Naturales looked on a time tree, and you can see other modern day testers, and they're able to see how they match against that academic sample. Next, we'll look at um, another ancient DNA sample. This is from Armenia. Armenia called Karasham. But what's interesting about this is that you see Karasham right here, 
uh, the Armenian samples, and you see, I think, a sample from Iraq, but if you look at Efert, this was found in a, a Jewish cemetery in Germany, so it's always amazing to me to see how without cars, the way people were migrating during ancient times in the different parts of the world. But all of those men descend from RL 584. And we'll look at another example of an ancient DNA sample called the Baca. I probably butchered that name, so forgive me. Um, he was discovered in Jordan. And um, so you see the Jordanian samples off to the left, but if you look up, um, there's also a Mongolian DNA match. And so those ancient DNA samples have served as an anchor for us to provide accurate um, dates for the tree of mankind. And lastly, we'll look at a, um, another Swedish DNA study. So we actually, this study was published in 2023. So it's, this, site, this person has only been on our site, hadn't been on our site that long. And, once the study was published, we did the same process, analyzed the data, and placed some results on the tree of mankind. And this allows you to look at Sambai on a time tree perspective, so other modern day testers can see how they are matched against him, like the Swedish samples you see there, and I think it's a Puerto Rican flag, German flag as well. And next, we'll just take a brief look at some family tree DNA testers that are in the time tree. Um, and so this is a branch for IBY4445. So interesting story here is that this is the branch for our head of research and development. His name is Joran. He's from Sweden. And so he always had a story about maybe like a second great uncle that left Sweden and came into the United States, never to be heard from again. And so when he moved to the United States probably five years ago, he does a surname search for people with his same last name. He discovered a, a relative that lives in Austin, Texas. And so they exchanged stories. So the American side had a story um, where their ancestor only told him that, they were, that he was from Sweden. He didn't provide any more information. So uh, Joran did his big white test and one of the American side of his family did a big white test and they matched. So, this was an awesome family reunion where they were disconnected for well over a hundred and some years. And this is more or less an Ashkenazi Jewish part of the tree. You can see our former owner, Bennett Greenspan, at the bottom. Uh, he started Family Tree DNA. And right above him, you can see other close Ukrainian testers that match him at JFT1. And you can see that they share a fairly recent common ancestor if you look at the time estimate up above. So the time tree just provides a really awesome layout um, to show you how you match modern day testers as well as academic and archeological samples. And this is a G part of the tree. Um, G haplogroup is largely under tested. So you can see Otzi the Iceman there on the screen. Uh, you also see some other archaeological samples that we've taken from grave sites around the world. So those German and those other modern day testers could see how they connect way back in time to Otzi the Iceman. And this is my part of the tree, yours truly, EFT, EFTC 600. So that's my terminal SNP. And it, it was only as a, re a result of me matching that sample fa found in South Carolina that I was finally able to confirm what part of Africa my direct paternal ancestry arose from. So my connection with Zimbu is much closer than what the time tree suggests due to the low SNP coverage found in, uh, with Zimbu. So our phylogenetic experts suggest that me and Zimbu share a common African ancestor that probably lived just a little bit more than 500 years ago. And what's interesting to note is that my family is from um, Clarendon County, South Carolina, my dad's side. And so Charleston is just 70, 80 miles away. And there's also a couple di more distant matches there. They're really far back, those Kenyan matches. They're from the Luha tribe. So we just share a common ancient an African ancestor. I think they went into Kenya as part of the Bantu migration. And here we're looking at a Native American part of the tree. 
And if you look down at the bottom, you see a St. Vincent flag and you see a Honduran flag. So these gentlemen are actually Afro-Caribbean. Um, so the Garifuna people were um, enslaved uh, and they were brought to uh, St. Vincent in the Caribbean and they were later transported to Honduras. And so um, this guy, one of the guys actually lives in Houston and he originally tested with another DNA testing company and they gave him some crazy haplogroup. And so he actually tested with Family Tree DNA and we got his haplogroup right because there was, he always had a story that um, his direct paternal ancestry was actually Native American. And so Big Y testing actually confirmed that. So he was actually one of the first modern day testers to match some of those Native American samples. And one of my colleagues is from Honduras. So every time he goes to Honduras, he'll take some kits with him and test some of the Garifuna people in hopes to trying to find more uh, Native American haplogroups. And so he actually lucked up this time. So the last time he came back, he tested some of the Garifuna men, and uh, one of them came back as a match to the original tester, uh, the Garifuna tester. They shared a Native American ancestor just a bit more than 300 years ago. And so customers can help us improve these SNP estimates by specifying the birth year on your big white kits and documenting your patrilineal genealogy. We use all this information to um, cal calibrate the tree and it's used for validation. So if customers um, want us to refine the dates, then we ask them to update their accounts. And so we, when we're getting ready to run an update, we can use that information they provided to, um, to calibrate the tree and um, provide um, some decent SNP age estimates. Next, we'll look at some new and improved features for this project. First, we'll go over the TIP reports. And so the FTDNA TIP report predicts the time to the most common ancestor using STRs or short tandem repeats. But this data was based off a 2001 paper by the great Bill Walsh, Bruce Walsh, which is a, who was a professor at the University of Arizona. But over the course of the years with the advancement of DNA testing, next generation sequencing and incorporation of academic and archaeological samples, we realized that those estimates that were provided were just far too young. Um, and so we wanted to update that TIP report. We got a, <clears throat> a lot of requests from some of our administrators to update that because they still use STRs and so we wanted to update that um, the TIP report for them. And so we're going to look at some examples. So if you look up at the top, this is uh, my uncle's uh, Y-DNA test. And so we're looking at our first match. Uh, we have a genetic distance of one, which means we match on 110 out of 111 markers. So there was a one mutation. So we already knew our common ancestor was a man born in Anson County, North Carolina, named Alex Smith. And, um, and so here we're going to look at um, an estimate using a tip report and see what it says. And so the results show that um, they give us a 95% probability that our common ancestor was born between 1700 and 1900. And so we actually rounded it off to 1850, but we know. And so I could accept that, um, you know, that discrepancy right there. But that's also why taking big Y is just so much more important, so important as well, because it really refines your matching. So this is another example um, where I'm examining another match. So we have a genetic distance of seven at Y111. So I want to show the tip report estimate for our time to common ancestor, as well as the SNP age estimate from Big Y. And for the STR estimate, it shows that there's a large gap saying that, uh, you know, between 1200 and 1750, they rounded it off our common ancestor to 1500. And so next, we're going to see what the Big Y says. And so the haplogroup story for our haplogroup EBY10134 says our common ancestor was born in 1400. So it was just off by a hundred years or so. And so this is just another example uh, using a tip report. And so what, I'm, what we're looking at here is a match uh, where we have a genetic distance of one at 37 markers. And if you look, the mean is uh, 1735. But if, once we start to examine more markers um, for someone at a genetic distance of one at um, 111 markers, our common ancestor 
uh, averages around uh, 1831. And next, uh, we'll look at um, the globe trotter. So we have a new migration map um, that it's going to be awesome when it's released. I wanted to include more video, but I did include a, a snapshot that you guys can take a look at. But um, even if you look at the right side, um, we're looking at the Native American branches. So it's kind of showing uh, also where the archaeological samples. You can see the spirit cave mummy that was found in Nevada. And there was another. Um, Native American sample found in California, St. Nicholas. So let's take a look at um, this new migration map. This is like a 40 second snapshot. So this is the I Haplo group. And you can also see the time. We're actually gonna refine this time down if you look in the top right. Um, so you can see time moving. So what we're about to see now is the I Haplo group migrating into um, Sweden, but it's going to turn back in just a second, and you're actually going to see the Viking invasion of the British Isles. And so the boat right here is showing that's the Viking invasion going into the British Isles. So that's going to be pretty awesome once we finish uh, with this uh, new migration map. So it's going to show interesting things like that for all haplogroups. Next, we'll look at it. Well, we released this feature about two weeks ago. It's called a group project time tree. And this is um, how you look at This is your view looking at a group project for family tree DNA. And as you can see, you have haplogroups and some other information there. But there's really no way for you to tell how you're related to how you're connected to the other people that you're grouped with. But with this new group project time tree feature, you can actually go into the group project, the research project, and click on the subgroups and choose which projects you want to um, get the dates for on the, for a time tree perspective. So this is more or less an African DNA project. So it's looking at some of the oldest lineages in the world. Um, so PR2921 is what we call Y chromosome Adam. And um, my third great grandfather, you see there is named Leon Sturdivant. And so I tested my first cousin three times removed because I thought my third great grandfather was the mulatto offspring of an enslaver, but we came back with the haplogroup going back over 150,000 years. So my cousin, he's in his 80s, so he was ecstatic to know that we were um, descended from some of their earliest archaic beings that walked the earth about over 100,000 years ago. And so this group project time tree, you can also use it for um, surname projects as well. I use it for research projects, so this is the McCray project. And my last name is McCray. And um, so if you want to see how you're matched with other people within that project, then of course you just go into the root pro uh, group project and click. So I chose the branch that I'm connected with. And so I always knew by my research that there was, um, when they left Scotland, there was a branch that went into Canada, and there was a branch that went into Anson County, North Carolina. So if you see at the bottom, you see Farquhar McCray, 1785, Anson County, North Carolina. I got my surname through his family. And so there's two ways to access the group project time tree. You can access it through your account. I click on group projects and then you click on group time tree. Or you can just go to the discover page and type in a respective project that you're interested in viewing. We also show you within the group project time tree how you're connected to ancient and notable connections as well. So you can look and see how you're related to modern day testers, but also you can click display options and see how you're related to notable connections as you can see there listed. I think we have Woody Harrelson, some Mayflower Fuller brothers, and a couple other people in their respective haplogroups. groups. Um, and so right now this Discover platform is currently in a public only beta stage. So if you'd like to participate in this, you really have to opt in to publicly share your results. That's very important to note. And this is also important that the group project time tree is, is uh, updated weekly. So they, it's based on periodic snapshots. And so if you have a new big Y test that comes in, if you make some adjustments to your account, it may take a couple weeks before you see that reflected on the group project time tree. And so, uh, how do you get the most from test results to solutions? 
uh, we actually recommend you join group projects. So group projects are like the lifeblood of our um, company. We have over 11,000 group projects. They're led by some of the best administrators in the world. We have astrophysicists, um, authors of Y-DNA books, you name it. So they're some of the most knowledgeable people in the world, and they come up with interesting ways to get people to do Y-DNA testing. Some of them have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars over the last few years out of their own pockets testing people, just trying to bridge those genetic gaps. And so essentially a group project time tree is a research project that is led by volunteer administrators who have a personal interest in furthering their own research. Group projects are free to join, but you may not always be the right person to join a project. So if you're a woman and you're joining a, y, a YDNA um, haplogroup project, then most, some administrators may recommend you test the male relative so they are able to analyze their test results. And so Family Tree DNA, we have over 11,000 research projects, and almost 90% 90, 90 of those testers uh, have took a, I'm sorry, almost 90% of Big Y testers are a member. So 75% of our group projects are based on surnames, and, we, and anyone that may have um, a lot of kits, um, we actually recommend they start a group project instead of signing in to each kit. Um, if you put all those kits in a group project, give yourself advanced access, then you have uh, a main, like a single sign-on. You can access your GAP account, your group administrator account to um, access those kits. And um, the group project, um, the Discover project also makes it easier. Uh, it could be a pretty daunting task for customers to figure out which group project to join. Um, and so we kind of made it easier. But so based off of your YDNA results, you can click on suggested group projects. And uh, based off of your results, we'll recommend which projects you should join. And it'll also show how many members in that project you may match. So we, once again, we're just trying to make it easier for customers to um, learn more about their YDNA and join research projects. And so group projects, allow you to share your research, both genetic and paper, and you can compare data simply beyond matching. You could also get test recommendations from some of the uh, best researchers in the world, and they may allow you to recruit other testers. So quite, quite often, administrators may want to get access to your account. So there may be some matches within your account that if they upgraded them, they may break down a brick wall. So there's various types of DNA projects. We have surname projects will help the evolution of a surname and reveal geographical origins. Next, we have haplogroup projects, geographical projects, and dual geographical projects. And so ultimately, the Discover project offers a comprehensive and unique set of tools that we believe that will be beneficial to both the testers and the administrator in uncovering more information about their paternal lineage. Uh, we feel it has the potential to fill in genetic gaps on a tree of mankind and solve genealogical puzzles. Ultimately, our goal is to encourage more uh, testers to explore the beauty of the Y chromosome um, in hopes of learning more about their patrilineal history um, and ancestry. And so um, that's actually the end. I really appreciate you guys for hearing me ramble for a little over 30 minutes. And I am available for questions if anyone has them. Um, once again, I really appreciate everybody for coming to view my presentation. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. What, what is sort of the best feature for recent genealogy? So this custom, I'm sorry, this man, he's asking about what's the best feature for recent genealogy. And yeah, so you can use the time tree um, or the discover tool. So you actually are able to view modern day testers on the time tree and you're able to see how you're connected with them from that aspect. And so. Yeah, I talked about academic sample, archaeological samples, as well as modern day testers. So other people that you match, you're able to use that project to see 
uh, the Discover Project to see how you match with them as well. So with, with some of those screenshots I, that show the uh, flags, um, those are actual modern day testers there. So that project is actually showing you how you are related to modern day people as well as far back in time. Does anyone have any more questions? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Appreciate it. Yes. And how is, how is, uh, is anyone integrating the findings of that with kind of traditional uh, history, history and traditional historians? Because um, what you find, what the company's finding is going to change a lot of like commonly accepted historical facts about migration. And yeah. Different population flows. Like yeah. So, um, I think your question is more or less how are they, how are we able to use those ancient academic samples? Where well, a lot of that information is sourced by not only by our, um, you know, our research and development team, but also um, there are living descendants in a lot in, in those uh, research projects uh, who've already tested, so they actually are able to confirm uh, the information that we provide and through Y DNA testing because some of those. Um, famous archaeological, you know, their descendants are already uh, in our research project. So quite often we have our administrators, they helped us out tremendously with this because they fact-checked us and they provided us with more information. And so, um, yeah, we try to be as ad more accurate as possible, but that is correct. And so um, in finding new um, discoveries around the world, it does, uh, we have to recalibrate the SNP age estimates and get a more insight into their DNA. Does anyone have any more questions? I'm open. Well, I really appreciate you guys taking your time to hear me ramble, and uh, it was a pleasure doing this presentation. Thank you.